I am glad to be home. I have ended my brutal travel season for the year. I'm going to be home for the next six weeks straight. And so my, my, uh, my wife will have to get used to me again. So... <laughs> Uh, we, that was a tremendous play last night. If you were not there, uh, this, they did a fantastic job. People were saved. I told Pastor Jesse, we need to do that again Wednesday. People are open to things at Christmas, and that is a worthy production. The gospel will be preached, so I want to encourage you, bring people uh, to that play. That'll be Wednesday night, Who Stole Christmas? And uh, we'll take advantage of the opportunity. Thank God. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Christmas. In 1776, the uh, war was not going well for George Washington and the Continental Army. They had lost battles. They'd been pushed out of New York. Washington's army was shrinking because uh, the enlistments, the, the term that they agreed to stay in the army, were expiring. Other men were deserting. And then the morale was very low because they had suffered defeats in the New York areas. They lost crucial supplies. And he was cut off from his other forces. So people began to doubt whether or not can we actually win this war at all, but on Christmas night, you're gonna put up a photo here. You know what he did in our history? Washington crossed the Delaware River with his troops. And by crossing the Delaware River, they were able to defeat uh, the Hessian, which is German mercenaries, in an attack on the following day. That crossing of the Delaware and the subsequent victory had a marked effect on the troops' morale. Soldiers celebrated the victory. Washington's role as leader was secured, and then Congress regained or had renewed enthusiasm for the war. So here's the point of me telling this story out of history. Washington survived Christmas. That is the point. In our text, a man named Joseph is given supernatural direction and help to survive Christmas. For many people, the most important part of the Christmas season is not what's under the tree, it is survival. And I want to preach about surviving Christmas, and uh, we're going to look at Matthew 1. 18 through 25, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall, will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took him to wife and didn't know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. I want to preach about surviving Christmas. Let's begin. Let's talk about Christmas surprises. The story that we read is, of course, the Christmas story, but it actually began as an engagement story. Our text says Mary was betrothed to Joseph. King James, that would be betrothed to, jo to uh, Joseph. That betrothed means engaged. They got engaged. So this should have been an incredibly happy time. This should have been a time of great joy and happy expectations. When couples got engaged, the husband, Joseph, the future husband, he should have been working on the house that they were going to live in, and they were going to begin their marriage. Mary would be 
making her preparations for the wedding day. I don't know, working on her dress, her hair, her jewelry, if she was plotting that every bridesmaid and groomsman would have lime green in there like they do today. I have no idea. But nonetheless, it should have been a happy time. But our story tells us the truth that Christmas can have surprises. Verse 18, she was found with child. How did this news get to Joseph? Did someone tell him? Did he notice that her belly was growing? Or did she tell him, look, I'm pregnant, but it's okay, because it was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. He knew that he wasn't responsible. In one moment, everything changed for this couple. The happiness that should have been there, it wasn't there. He... The Bible says because he was a just man, he wasn't trying to shame her. He was trying to keep it to himself. Did other people notice? Like, what's wrong, bro? What's, what's going on? Or did they notice her? There would have been rumors and whispers and funny looks. Maybe the family was pressuring when they found out that she got pregnant. But my point is, Christmas and surprises, this was a huge surprise that changed everything because that's actually a picture of what happens to many people during Christmas. It is not the happiest time of the year. Like the song says, tis the season to be jolly. It's the happiest time of the year. But for many people, that's not true. It's not the happiest time of the year. What they feel is sadness. What they feel is confusion, pressure, and conflict. And many people, they start feeling guilty or strange. What's wrong with me hearing the words and the advertising of what it's supposed to be? I don't feel like the song. Right now, what's going on in my heart is not like the movie. Not like the Hallmark Christmas movie. Because this is built into the Christmas story. The Christmas story is the story of surprises because it's the truth of assault. At the exact moment in time of engagement, when they're supposed to be uh, uh, having a joyous time of uh, preparation, the devil was already at work to ruin Christmas. The Bible tells that there was crazy political pressure Caesar has an idea. I want there to be a census. I want you to count everybody in my entire uh, uh, empire. And he adds in an extremely difficult uh, uh, command. You know, census is they come to your house. But he says, no, whatever town you were born in, travel there and we'll count you there. So by the time this happens, Mary is nine months pregnant. Imagine that, ladies, any of you that had a baby. Imagine you're almost ready to give birth. Hey, hop on that donkey, baby. We got a trip to go on. That is very difficult. Herod, at the same time, is pressuring the wise men, you know, that he wound up attacking the children. Because that is what the devil does. He attacks in seasons. In Hamburg, Germany, the city holds a, a Christmas market next to a church each year. And at this Christmas market, you can buy Christmas ornaments and gifts. You can drink hot drinks and listen to Christmas music. But in 2016, a Muslim terrorist deliberately drove a truck into the Christmas market, deliberately trying to run people over. He killed 12 and injured 56 people. Imagine that at Christmas. Because that's what the devil does. The devil uses the time of Christmas strategically as a point in time to attack people in an extra way. He uses what we lack. The, the images of Christmas are family and happiness, but there are people they lack family. It's buying plenty of presents to be under the tree for Christmas 
day, but there are people, they lack the finances and the devil uses that. How can you have happiness if you don't have family, if you don't have money? He uses current events, divorce, conflict, sickness. He uses reminders of sad things. One of the things that happens the longer you live is there are people that pass away. And for many people, it's Christmas time. Some people, they come up, it's their first Christmas without the loved one that has passed away. For others, it's Christmas time is a reminder of past abuse and family breakup. I've read of people that dad announced to the family that he was leaving them and running off with another woman on Christmas. And so now when Christmas comes around, it's a confusing time and the devil plays on that to assault people's minds. So the Bible records into the Christmas story. Pastor Jesse is going to read this, the Advent story. And we're going to have video and music and all that. That'll be next Sunday morning during Sunday school. But built into the Christmas story are surprises and assaults. And the reason why that's written is to help some people here so you can survive Christmas. Let's talk about the Christmas assault. Think about the numbers of ways that the devil uses this. Christmas, for some people, can be a season of temptation. The Bible says that Joseph was tempted to get rid of Mary. His, his bride-to-be announces, I'm pregnant. He knows he's not responsible. People are talking. And the Bible says he was minded to put her away. During Christmas, this would actually, even the engagement was legally binding, and so he had to, in effect, divorce her, put her away, get rid of her. That was what he was tempted to do. He was going to do it quietly to try to help, but nonetheless, he was tempted, get rid of this problem. Built into the Christmas story is the temptation and the pressure to do wrong. Matthew 2, 8. He sent the wise men to Bethlehem. Said, go search diligently for the young child. And when you found him, bring me word again that I may come, my, I may come and worship him also. For Joseph, the temptation is put her away. For the wise men, it was do what a wicked king says instead of what God is telling you to do. You know what? For some people, Christmas time is the time that the pressure to do wrong is ramped up or amplified. For some people, it is Christmas time. They have contact with unsaved family that they don't usually have contact with the rest of the year. Other people will be traveling. They're going to leave their church home and brothers and sisters that they know in the church, and they're going to be away from people who normally strengthen them. Christmas time is a time at work parties and, and uh, Christmas parties and you are expected to attend and participate and there are expectations from unsaved people. Unsaved people don't think like Christians. What? But the whole family is going to the bar. The whole family is going to the nightclub. You're not going to, you're going to ruin Christmas fun. What? You're not going to get drunk with us at Christmas? It's, isn't that what Christmas is all about? Isn't it amazing how the most holy holidays of the year, for some people, that equals alcohol. That's why we have, that's why, thank God, God gave us Christmas so people can get drunk. That's how some people think. Then there are people that have religious and cultural expectations. 1 Peter 4.4 4 in the New Living Translation says, your former friends are very surprised when you no longer join them in the wicked things they do, so they say evil things about you. That's Christmas. For some people, temptation. For others, it's a season of depression. Some studies say that Christmas, for some, is the most depressing time of the year. It's not the happiest time of the year. It's the most depressing. Christmas time, do you know that domestic violence drug and alcohol abuse, it soars. In some places, the rate of suicide goes up at Christmas time. And the reason why is that people have false expectations. 
They're listening to the nonstop Christmas music and they think I should be happy in the season of joy. And so now they feel like an outsider. Everybody else is happy and I'm not. Those that like social media, this, this adds to it. When you're clicking on your f- people that you follow, is there's an instant comparison. Never mind what they're putting on is fake. Never mind they are putting on filters and, and uh, they're, they're putting up an image that's not true. But you comparing what you have and how you feel and how you look with other people. So what some people do, because of how they feel, they give in to temptation in order to try to get some Christmas cheer and happiness. There are people that they give in to drugs and alcohol. They hook up in immorality because of loneliness at Christmas. And the devil uses the Christmas season to torment some people. In this story, in the few words, you might not grasp how stressful this was. Joseph was stressed out about Mary. Joseph and Mary, now all of a sudden at this season, you have to travel far from home, be separated from your family. Crisis call centers, they report that they get a much higher number of calls during Christmas, and so the devil uses Christmas to torment people over broken families, missing relationships, uh, difficulties that, they're going on, that are going on in their life. And finally, Christmas, for some, can be a season of dishonor. Joseph, in our story, is deciding whether he is going to honor God and God's will or he's going to give in to his personal emotions and desires. Verse 19, Joseph, being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, he was minded to put her away secretly. I feel sad about this, so I have to do that. That's what people do. Is in the Christmas season, they allow the pressure of Christmas to cause them to dishonor God. For some people, it's what they do with their money in the Christmas season. There are people that because it's Christmas, they make insane financial decisions that they can't afford simply because of the expectation of what it's supposed to be. Here's a... There's a a book that records letters that children write to Santa. Here's one of them. Dear Santa, you didn't bring me anything good last year. You didn't bring me anything good the year before that. This is your last chance. Signed, (laughs) Alfred. (laughs) Christmas is supposed to be. And some people feel that. You know, some people, what they do in the Christmas season, they wind up going into debt. The average American household will charge nearly $1,800 over the Christmas holidays. Six to seven months after Christmas, they're still paying off last year's Christmas presents, but many people only make the minimum payment on the debt at an average rate of almost 18%. That means this year's Christmas shoppers will still be paying for their purchases until 2029. And they just read the other day about 25% of people say they're still paying off last year's Christmas giving. So here's the sad thing is because people give in to pressure, they make foolish financial decisions that then cause conflict and fighting the rest of the year. And then there are some people that they do not honor God in the Christmas season because of their financial decisions that they gave in. To pressure. Let's look finally at Christmas survival. The story of Joseph that we read is a powerful example of how we can survive Christmas. How do you survive Christmas? Number one, you have to think of others. The decisions you make at Christmas time cannot be just based on how you feel. You have to think about other people. Verse 19, Joseph 
her husband being a just man, not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. He is confused. He doesn't get what's going on. And yet, his decision is about Mary. I am going to choose what's best for Mary. In the Christmas season, we have to follow Joseph's example. You may feel a certain way. There may be sadness. There may be pressure. There may be expectations. But what you do is going to affect others. It's going to teach other people, like your children, like new converts. They're going to learn from you. And so, number one, you have to think of others. Number two, you have to choose to honor God at Christmas. The angel comes and says, Joseph, son of David. In other words, God says, I remind you that you are connected to God. I'm sad, I know, but you're connected to God. In other words, the choice that you're about to make, Joseph, remember that God has a plan for your life. So we have to allow God to be at the center of our Christmas. Verse 20 through 22, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She'll bring forth a son. You'll call his name Jesus because he'll save people from their sins. All this was done so that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being translated means God with us. You have to choose. I am going to honor God this Christmas. And then we have to obey God at Christmas. Verse 24, Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took him, took uh, to him, his wife, and didn't know her until she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Joseph is a powerful example for us. He survived Christmas because he says, you know what, in this season, I'm going to do what God told me to do. And then something powerful, he married the will of God. He took her as his wife. This is God's plan and he made a binding commitment. That would really help if you marry the will of God. You don't date the will of God. You don't just check them out online. God, your will is what I am making a commitment. And then he names Jesus, uh, uh, the baby Jesus, exactly as he'd been commanded. What you have to do is name your situation the same as God does. You know what happens when we will do right at Christmas? It releases God's help on our behalf. Built into the Christmas story are angels. Joseph has an angel appear to him to encourage him. God warned the wise men in a dream to protect. God winds up later on warning Joseph in a dream to protect Joseph and Mary and the baby Jesus. So what that means is whenever all those people, it was Joseph, Mary, and the wise men, they all chose to do right, and when they did, God brought supernatural help. Do you know... Some of the things that I talked about, about the Christmas depression, the Christmas pressure, whatever it might be, God can help you to live a new life in this season. This does not have to be a season of depression. God can meet with you. God can help you in this time to survive a depression. Some of you here that... Christmas truly is a time of sadness because of things that have gone on in the past or things that are missing. You need to cry out. God is able to break that spirit off of you. He is able to bring healing from your past if that's the root of it. He's able to meet with you in the present. God wants to meet with people so that they have their own Christmas 
miracles and they survive. I close with this story. I read this, a lady named uh, Judy Zwerblitz. She tells of her, one of the early Christmases in her life. She said her father was in the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard had moved them to uh, Newfoundland in Canada. And Christmas morning, he gathered the family around and he says, I want to tell you a story of what happened to me just the other day. He said, we were called out. He was a part of the Coast Guard rescue team. He said, we were called out to rescue the crew. A Russian ship said their ship is taking on water. They're sinking. It's in the middle of the, the ocean. Terrible storm was going on. The ship is going down and time is of the essence. But he said, by the time our helicopter got to the area, there was a heavy fog. You could not see anything below. Our fuel was getting low. And uh, uh, this lady, Judy, said that dad told them, if we don't see the sailors soon, we're going to have to go back or we're going to get in trouble. The pilot said, we have to turn around. Judy said, my father told the pilot, we, we're their only hope. Let's give it a few more minutes. He said, just as we were about to turn back, dad said, I prayed and said, Lord, please help us find these sailors so they can be saved. And in that moment, he said it was like a curtain was drawn back, the fog lifted, and immediately below us, we could see several men standing on the ship's bow as it's about to go under. They're waving flags. The helicopter was overhead. He said he lowered the harness, pulled each man to safety, and just as the last man climbed aboard, the vessel sank. He had his five-year-old daughter, Joanne, uh, uh, sitting on his lap and when he finished that story of Christmas survival she said daddy I got a miracle too three days ago I went ice skating on the pond and the ice gave way and I plunged into the water I yelled for help there was no one to help me the water was making my coat heavy and I started uh, I was underwater she said suddenly a big hand grabbed me at the back of my coat. The next thing I knew, I was standing on the path leading back to our house. I was still wearing my skates, but my boots were stacked neatly beside me as if they'd been placed there. She said she changed into them. Her coat and her ice skates were dry as a bone. She said, did I imagine falling in the water? But her mittens were soaked through with icy water. She said, God, was the one who reached down and pulled me out of the pond. I want to tell you, God wants to help you survive Christmas. I like those two stories because that's, that is actually what God wants to do. There are people, Christmas, you've been struggling. We're getting close. We're a week and a couple days away from Christmas and you're or, uh, you know, a week and a day away and you already, right now, you're feeling the pressure and the depression is coming on you. I want to tell you, God wants you to survive. And he wants to meet with you today. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes all across this place. Thank God. With our heads bowed. The very first thing I want to do is I want to give a challenge to some people that are here. You are not right with God. The Christmas story is actually not Santa. The Christmas story is what we read there. You call his name Jesus, for he shall save the people from their sin. That is the true message of Christmas. The Bible says we all are sinners. We have broken God's commands. We're living our own way. And that brings destruction. Some of you, your relationships are being destroyed right now. Some of you, it brings guilt and shame. Others, it's addictions. Others, it's loneliness and unhappiness. But I'm telling you the good news. Jesus Christ can do a miracle because this is the true Christmas story. God came out of heaven to become a man. That's the baby Jesus, born as a man so he could live a perfect life that we had no hope of living and he could die the death that we deserve that is the true Christmas story. 
You can be saved from your sin. That's the most important message in this Christmas season. How many people here, if you were to be honest right now, you would say, Pastor Greg, I am not right with God. I know that God would not be pleased with the way I'm living right now. I know that I'm living in sin. But I do want God to forgive me. I want God to change me from the inside out. How many people here, you say, I want to pray this morning. That's how you deal with your sin problem. You pray. You ask God to forgive you. And if you want to do that this morning, I want you to do one thing. Lift up your hand so I can see it. By lifting your hand, you're saying, Pastor Greg, I want to pray I want God to forgive me of my sins. How many would there be? Lift up your hand right now. I need Jesus. How many here? Lift up your hand. Hold it up so I can see it. Thank God over on the side. Thank you. How many others? I need Jesus. God bless you. Others, you want to get right with God? Lift your hand right now. God loves you. He wants to do a miracle in you. Anybody else? Lift up your hand so I can see it. Over on the side. God bless you. How many others? Some of you are backslidden. You were saved. You turned your back on God and now you're facing this Christmas season with the awful realization that I'm not right with God anymore. But you can fix that this morning. How many backsliders lift up your hand? God loves you. He wants to save you. Thank you. Others, you need Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Numbers of people say they want to get right with God. Anybody else? I want every person that wants to get right with God. Lift your hand now and we're going to pray for you. Thank God. I want those that lifted their hand, nobody else, look up at me. You meant that? Yes. You want to get right with God? You meant that? Yes, yes, yes. Over here, yes. And over there, yes. You want to get right with God? I want you to come here out of your seat. I'm going to have someone pray with you. If you would come here, you bring them over on the side. My brother, come kneel down here. We're going to have someone pray with you. And we're going to ask God to help you. God bless you. Some ladies there lifted their hands. Thank you. God bless you, man. Over on the side, thank you for being honest with God. God's going to help you. Let's all stand up to our feet. I'm going to open the altar. Some of you, you are in a season of struggle right now. Temptation or pressure, sadness, whatever it might be. I want you to come to the altar and ask God to help you. God will do a miracle inside of you. If you'll pray, cry out, say, God, I need you to help me in this season. Amen. We're going to sing while people are coming to pray right now. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. And I need thee. I need thee. I need thee. I need thee. Oh, oh I, need I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my, my Savior. Savior. I come, come to, to thee. I need thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Sing it again, I need thee, I need thee. me now, my Savior, I come to thee. Amen. I want you to bow your heads.
and we're going to pray together. I am going to ask God to do a miracle of strengthening and encouraging. I'm going to pray for you right now. God, there are people that are here, they are struggling. God, some of them, it is pain from the past that right now the devil is using in this Christmas season against them. The devil is reminding them and accusing them of things that they lack. There are people that are here, they're hurting because of the death of loved ones. And there are people that have suffered trauma. I need you. God, in this Christmas season, you appeared. You came down and you encouraged Joseph and Mary. God, you encouraged the wise men and gave direction. That's what I need you to do. I'm asking you to bring healing. I rebuke that spirit of depression from off of their minds. I command encouragement and life. Oh, God, meet with them. Make yourself real. This morning, Lord God, in this Christmas season, I pray that you're going to help every one of these people to survive this season and to honor you in this season. And I thank you for doing that in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's praise God together. God, we thank you, Lord God. Oh, God, thank you for helping people, Lord God. Thank you for encouragement and help and blessing that you give in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to be dismissed, reminding you that we have a, uh, the children's Christmas.